much, my daughter, for the, for the submission of, to prayer <clears throat> that you have already awarded to each one of us. Uh, oh, that faith, the fire of faith that makes us stand, that makes us do different things. Ah, uh, my beauty, this is your time, my daughter, to take us to the throne of grace and mercy again and hear what the Lord has given you. Give it all. Give it all. This is your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mam Zobs. Thank you, Makunere. Uh, thank you and good morning. Uh, happy Sabbath to, to my brothers and my sisters who are here this early in the morning. Um, you know, this, this is indeed uh, the day that the Lord has made. And I'm among those who, who will rejoice and I'm among those who will be glad in it. I, I, I'm going to be short, I hope, this morning. And I'm just here uh, to make an appeal, really. We, we have been talking this week. And God has been speaking to us, has been speaking to us, has been pushing us, has been challenging us. God has been calling us, come up higher. And I think just to wrap it up, we, we need to remind ourselves um, of a couple of things before we go into, as we finish this week, um, going into a new, a new week. So um, without wasting too much time, I'm actually going to ask us to read a, 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 a a paragraph or two um, from the Bible, from the book of Acts. I wonder if I'm going to read in your hearing. I hope that you will also read uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 1. I think I'll stop at verse 11. So let me go ahead and read. Um, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he had also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse four, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them. Please take note of the language that is being used. He commanded them. Other version says he constrained them or he compelled them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not so many days from now. So in a few days from now, you shall receive the promise of the Father, the gift of the Spirit. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put um, in his own authority, but you shall receive power. Verse eight, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Oh, you shall witness to me, witness of me. Where? In Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Verse nine, when he had spoken these things, I get excited um, when I read verse nine. When he had spoken these things, while they watched in front of their very own eyes, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, suddenly gravity lost its hold on our savior. While they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel who also said to the men of Galilee, in my language, it says, my daughter, my Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, this same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him 
go into heaven. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. I know I am speaking to Adventists this morning. I am speaking to a company of believers who are waiting for this same Jesus who was taken up into heaven and the same Jesus who will in like manner come back. I know I'm speaking to such people. So I thought perhaps it's important before we wrap this up, before we conclude this conversation about faith to talk about and really to tap ourselves on the shoulders and to remind us again, Jesus is coming again. That is a sure word of prophecy and everything that he has said would happen is happening and will happen. Jesus is coming again. If somebody said, why did beauty say to you this morning, one word, one phrase, our Lord is coming again, full stop. He's coming again. Now, this, this book of, of, of Acts starts by introducing to us the book of Acts. It is the Acts of the Apostles. It is the works. It basically details the works done by the apostles um, of Jesus. But when it starts, it starts telling us about the departure of Jesus and the promises that he made to them before he left. And so the work that these guys did were basically driven by the experiences that they had had before Jesus had left. And, and, and he, in, 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 if you go and read the book of John, all the, all the gospels, but I love the way John puts it. If you go and read the book of John, as Jesus was approaching his departure, yay, he was telling them big things. He was preparing them, talking to them about peace, but he kept reminding them about the gift of the spirit. Basically, God in the person of Christ was saying to them, while I will depart in person, I will remain in the person of the Holy Spirit. So we have the privilege of still having Jesus right here with us in the person of the Holy Spirit while we wait for Jesus in person to come. So, so Jesus, and I remember in the book of John, and I thought this for me was very potent. In the book of John, he says to them, verse 12, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, he who has faith in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And listen to this, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. And so when the spirit came, he says to the disciples, wait, 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 before you go, wait for the gift of the spirit. And then when the spirit shall come, you will receive power. I don't know, guys, if there's someone here, because I'm sure there's going to be time, season of prayer, um, but you can even do this in the comfort of your own home. Ask God for the gift of the spirit. He says in another place that if you as mere humans know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will I, God, your father who made you, not give the gift of the Holy Spirit? Listen to the condition, if you ask for him. And so this morning, I'm looking for people. God is looking for people who say, Lord, here I am. I am here to ask for one thing and one thing only, the gift and the promise of the Holy Spirit. Because my friend, your life will never, ever be the same. The minute the Holy Spirit has come upon you, it says in verse eight of the book of Acts, when the spirit of God has come upon you, you shall receive power. When the spirit of God has come upon you, you will, like Paul, be able to say, I am crucified with Christ. I'm here, guys. In person, you see this form and the shape of a human being. But deep inside this person, beauty is no longer in, in, in operation, but it is Christ in me. And the only way to receive that is if we ask him. And we can ask him on a daily basis before I get out of my house. In the morning, the first thing I come to God and I ask for, Lord, I pray for that spirit. Oh, moya, is it 153? Oh, for that gift of the spirit. So I'm here to say to us, before we depart the seven day uh, um, process that God has put us and spoke to us about the gift of faith, listen, 
If, you, if there's one thing I want us to ask for him this morning, I know your plate is full. I know your list is full of things that you want to ask for God. But can I ask, can I ask you at the top of your list, can you ask God for the gift of the spirit and ask for this gift on a daily basis and see what that will do to your life? Because it's a promise he made. And listen to me, listen to me. If you do not believe me, go and read the book of the apostles. Go and examine the lives of these men that had met and walked with Jesus. But when he left, they were never the same. Of course, my favorite, my favorite is Peter. And so every now and again, I always bump at Peter because I, what I see in Peter is the power of the Holy Spirit. What I see in Peter is the, is the manifestation of John 15, 14, verse 12, where Jesus says, if you believe in me, you will not only do the things that I did, but you will do more than I did. I don't know about you guys, but I want to do more. I want to do more for Jesus more than he himself did because he said if you receive the gift of the spirit if you have faith that like the faith that i give you if you believe in me you will do not just some of what i did you will do more of what i did and so if you look at the disciples in the book of acts if you follow the the the, the, the works that they did if you follow the miracles that they did these guys were driven by two things and if you look at that they did more they did some things that Jesus did. They healed the sick. Uh, you would remember Paul and um, Peter uh, walking in, into, the, into, into the temple and somebody's asking them for money. And they said, silver and gold, we do not have. But in the name of Jesus, we come in that name. And so guys, I want to let you know this morning, God, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. The, the disciples of Jesus, the apostles were driven by two things and those two things drove them to nobody's business. One, they were driven. They were driven by what God had done for them. They're driven by the experiences that they had had with them. They were driven by their walk with Jesus and that the things that Jesus had done for them, they could not keep them in their, within them. You know, there was fire in their boat. Guys, if you remember, Peter, remember, this is the guy that denied Jesus. This is the man that denied Jesus. He did, Jesus told him you would deny him, and he still went and denied him. This is the, the, the guy that was, Peter was so impulsive, he cut somebody's ear. That was the pre-resurrection Peter. But if you go and read about Peter post-resurrection, he did amazing things because at some point, Jesus had done something amazing for them. So I want to ask you this morning. Has Jesus done something for you? Is there something that Jesus has done for you? Now, you would remember um, when Jesus had gone up, he, Peter denied, denied him, was swearing, wanted to nothing to do with Jesus because he was terrified. But his eyes made contact with the eyes of Jesus. I don't know what happened in that contact, but a lot of communication took place. And he was never the same. But Jesus had to make sure. So he says, when he wakes up, he says to Mary, go and tell the disciples and Peter. And so Peter, my friends, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. If you want to know why some of us are pursuing this Jesus, it is not because of any power inside of us. It is not because of our eloquence. It is not because of our education. I am here. I don't know about you, but I am here pursuing Jesus. I am here doing my best to follow Jesus because he has done great things in my life. I often say to people, the song Amazing Grace for me, if you ever wonder what's amazing about grace, you are looking at it. Had it not been for the grace of God, I would not even be alive today. I know because some of the people I was running with are no longer alive today. So the reason I stand whenever I have an opportunity, the reason I try, I'm not perfect, but the reason I try for me is the same reason as Peter does, because he had found grace, he had found favor, he had been saved by grace. And so these guys were running and were telling everybody about Jesus because it had nothing to do with them. It was because to whom much had been forgiven, much can be expected. So how much has Jesus forgiven you? How much has God, and why are you quiet about that? And that is one thing that drove the disciples. The second thing as I close, that drove the disciples was what happened on the Mount of Olives that morning. What drove the disciples is what should drive all of us 
us Adventists. What drove the disciples is what should drive all of us, Masabata, the promise of the coming of Jesus. They saw him leave. They watched him go, their savior, their friend, their confidant. But as he left, God had to make sure that he, he, he also comes and gives them this promise. The same Jesus that you see depart is the same Jesus that's going to come again. So these guys, and they asked, Lord, when are you coming? And Jesus says, we know not the hour. And so they were like, we don't know the hour, but we know he's coming. So in the time that we have left, between now and the coming of Jesus, or between now and the death of Jesus, we will do everything in our power. In my language, we say that as Julie Jack, they threw themselves at the work of, of Jesus. Do you remember Peter preaching and 3,000 people? Peter, the same Jesus denying Peter, the same lying Peter, that same Peter preached and 3,000 people were converted. Why? Because Peter was saved what Jesus won. Two, because Peter was waiting for that coming Jesus. Peter was walking and I want to commend to all of us this morning to walk in an easterly direction, to walk with an easterly posture, waiting for that blessed hope, that glorious appearing of the Jesus. But that hope to come and operate in our lives today, to push us today, do you remember? What are the most ridiculous things that used to happen? The Bible says in the book of Acts that when the disciples would come into town, there would be crowds of people. These now were the mere humans, men and women. These, when they would come into town, crowds of people would follow them looking for the healing that Jesus gave and he allowed the disciples to also give. And the Bible says, even if the shadow, people would just put their sick along the road when these guys would be walking such that even if the shadow of peter would fall on them that was enough they would find healing i'm here to speak to us seventh day adventists adventists with the capital a people who are waiting for the coming of jesus people who are driven by the blessed hope that glorious appearing of our lord and savior jesus but i'm here to say as Ellen White says, says, she says, heaven begins here. She says, she says, heaven is a ceaseless approach to God through Jesus, through Christ, through Christ in us, the hope of glory, through Christ in us, the Holy Spirit. So while we are looking for the blessed hope, while we are waiting for that glorious appearing, the physical appearance of Jesus, may that blessed hope influence every aspect of our lives today. May that blessed hope influence the way we build because the master builder is coming. May that blessed hope influence the way we serve because him, he whom we are serving is coming. Our master is coming. May that blessed hope compel us to stand for Jesus, though the heavens fall. And so as we close, I want to speak to those who say this thing of faith is difficult. I agree with you, my friend. The faith we spoke about this week, we did not finish. We can never exhaust it. It's difficult. But can I tell you something? His grace is sufficient for us. His grace, his mercies, I knew every day, giving us the power every day, power by the Holy Spirit to stand by that faith. His grace, his strength is made perfect in witness. And in case you forgot, in case you forgot you were waking up every day, going to church on Saturday, that same Jesus who's calling us to true faith, that same Jesus, he will come and not delay. And so my question, when the son of man shall come, will he find faith? And my prayer for me, I hope that that will be yes. I don't know about you. And so thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the gift and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation, which has planted fire in our bones, which makes us struggle to keep quiet about you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for the blessed hope. Sometimes it's the only thing that keeps us going. The fact that even as this world is shaking like a leaf, you are coming again. Thank you. Thank you for the blessed hope. Amen. Thank you, Mamzobst.